Okay, folks. <laughs> I am Mary Sue Lanigan, and I'm with the Michigan Park Foundation. I want to welcome, welcome you all this evening, and we are really delighted to have um, Jackie Groendike. Am yes. I saying your name right? And if yes. I say it wrong, just go ahead and correct me. And she is going to talk about um, a program that she's developed that is for brain health and exercise, a, a combination. It, I will let you explain it a little better, okay? Because this is the first time I've seen it. I'm going to mute all of you except for Jackie. Um, there is a chat button at the very bottom of your screen. Um, does everybody see it? No. 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 It says chat. Yeah. Look at no. the top of your screen. No. Um, nobody sees chat? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, now I do. It's on the bottom. It's here. <laughs> okay. Um, it, the easiest way to ask questions is to send the question through the chat, and then we will address them at, after the presentation. I said I will also unmute all of you at the end, but for, while Jackie's speaking, I'm going to mute everyone. There's a lot of background um, noise. Okay? Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Jackie, you're going to need to mute it for just a second. Now, what I need, can you see yourself on the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, after I mute everyone, could you unmute yourself? It works yes. better if you do it that way? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, well, well and, uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for uh, coming and attending. And I want to thank uh, Emily for setting this up for me today. And... Uh, Emily and I have not had the privilege of meeting in person, and I think this is the first time Emily and I are getting to uh, see each other uh, for the first time, so it's, it's good. But uh, excited to be here with you this evening and excited to share. Um, I just want to make a slight little correction to the introduction because I don't want to take credit for anything that is not mine. Bell of this sex is not my program. I, I wish I was brilliant enough to come up with it, uh, but I must give credit to Bill Hubert, uh, who is um, a gentleman that lives out in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, I was introduced to Balavis Sex probably about um, 15 to 20 years ago, and just through going to his workshop over and over and over again, pretty soon he's like, I recognize you, you've been here before. And I'm like, yep, I, I wanna be able to do this, you know. Um, and anyways, uh, so it belongs with Bill Hubert, so I gotta give credit where credit is due. But um, what I'm gonna do here just in a minute is I am going to share my screen uh, and just, and then kind of give a little background of what leads me to coming here tonight and getting the opportunity to share with you guys. So give me just a minute here to uh, share, okay? And um, I guess even before I do that, um, I guess I wanna ask and make sure, is did everybody find the chat? Because if I share my screen, well, I can't, it doesn't show that that one to share. Okay, um, on my computer, it is actually at the bottom of the screen uh, where then it says uh, the chat, I'm sorry, the chat part there. And, and now I didn't, now I'm trying to share and I didn't get this up and running. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, but Jackie, the chat, one, one thing, I can yeah the chat questions as they come in. I see your shared screen and I can see you. So you're good to go. Okay. Yep. All right. And then, and then you can see the chat. Yes. Okay. I am not seeing the chat. At the moment. I will, I will make sure when you're done with your presentation, we'll hold the questions till you're done. Okay. okay? And then I will t let you know what the questions are. Perfect. Okay. okay. Um, so anyways, uh, what is it that, um, why is it that I was even invited to get to come talk to you this evening? Um, 
and, and what brings me here. So my background is actually in education. Uh, I've been a school teacher for 30 years from elementary through middle school. And so now you're really wondering why did they bring a school teacher to talk to us this evening? And, um, you know, my background being in the classroom, when I started teaching 30 years ago, what I saw when I left the classroom was, was very, very different. Yet as a teacher, I had to figure out how to work and teach with my kids. And I went back to school for the third time. And I went back to Michigan State to get a degree in uh, kinesiology, developmental motor control, and neuroscience. Because what I found with my kids, my students in my classroom is, even though I taught to the 20 or 30 of them, some got it, some didn't get it, some struggled to get it, yet it was the same lesson. And so somehow uh, some of those kids would connect with me, some of them would not connect with me. And really then wanting to learn what was it that helps certain kids learn and other kids need to and then you know really getting into the neuroscience of things and that led one thing into another and now I here I'm in Holland so I'm on the west side of the state I have what I call a multi-sensory learning center and not only do I work with young kids uh, who may or may not be struggling academically, behaviorally, emotionally. Uh, but I also have a, a wonderful group of, they don't like to be called senior citizens, so they call them, we call ourselves, because I'll put myself even into that category these days, um, as older adults. And uh, we come and we have fun, we exercise, do our balavisex together. And so how does this connect then with Parkinson's. So as we look and, and read about Parkinson's, I'm gonna say most of you, because you are dealing with it, because you know somebody who is dealing with it, you very well may know more than I do in terms of Parkinson's, but, but bear with me uh, as, as we go through it. Um, but trying to understand what part of it so I can connect the dots here in terms of what's happening in the brain with Parkinson's and then why is it that it seems like balavisex is a great fit and then we'll be sh I'll be showing you some exercises and explaining a little bit of what balavisex looks like. Okay, uh, so these are uh, a few of my girls that, that come and hang out with me a couple times every week uh, to do our Bella Visex. But as, as we look, and I, I included Alzheimer in here just because both Parkinson's and Alzheimer's tend to be a disease of the brain. Something is going on in the brain. And if, if you see the regions, you see that the Parkinson's is the substantia ni uh, nigra, which is where dopamine is made, okay? And we're gonna come back to that. Where Alzheimer's hippocampus, then we look at what's the difference. Parkinson is more a movement di disorder, where Alzheimer is more of a mental disorder, okay? And so we are gonna get into a little bit of the neuroscience now and talking about what's happening in the brain, okay? So it's all location, location, location. I don't know if you can see my mouse, my little arrow, but this little blue section is the hippocampus. This is what's happening with Alzheimer's, okay? That's the part of the brain that's being affected. That's why it is dealing with cognitive and behavior. Parkinson's and Alzheimer are somewhat similar in that the brain begins to develop a sort of plaque and tangles and then begins to impact what's going on in the brain, okay? But we're here to talk a little bit more about Parkinson's, okay? So we have the loss of the dopamine. And if you see, it's right down here at the bottom, right by the brain stem, we call that the basal ganglia, it's in there. And so that is, um, 
the the Niag the substantia Niagara there. And what it does is it generates dopamine. Okay, then your next question may be, what is dopamine? Dopamine is a chemical that your body creates that helps the, the neural connections in your brain communicate. It then allows your muscles, okay, and brain to communicate. When the, uh, a person begins having Parkinson's, what's happening is a degenerative or degeneration of the, I'm going to call it the dopamine factory, and lesser dopamine means lesser neural connections happening there, okay, firing, and then the movement begins to impact, okay? So, and again, I think most of you may have heard some of this, may have a basic understanding of it, you know, but again, it's that dopamine piece that I want to highlight, okay? So what happens in your brains, in, in our brains, those with uh, the Parkinson's then, okay? Here you have a normal neuron. It's creating a, a whatever, the regular amount of dopamine. And your body then has it, gets it, process it, good communication is happening in the brain, you get normal movement. However, here you still have the neuron, okay? But you see that the dopamine is considerably less, okay? And when the production of the dopamine is less, you end up then with uh, movement disorders. Okay, also what I want to share and talk about as we go through this is, again, remember where that was in the brain. It's kind of here in the middle of your brain in the basal ganglia. Up here, if you see my arrow moving up there, that is our, what we call the motor cortex. It's right up here in this upper part of the brain. The dopamine factory is down here that dopamine needs to travel up, okay, to communicate to our motor part of our brain. I share all this um, because I want you to understand, and so here on this one, I show you where that motor cortex is. I teach a lot of teachers about movement and learning, and if you think about how little babies are born, they begin and how do they learn? Everything is through movement. They first hear a noise. They're turning their head. They see something. They're looking at it. Here is the movement. Here is the cognition part of our brain in the front, okay? Parkinson's attacks the motor part first. Then secondly, it attacks the language Here's the Broca center, it then will go forward here, okay? So we're attacking here, then we're attacking here. First up, second to the front, okay? And that is how Parkinson's continues on. There is, unfortunately at this time, no cure for Parkinson's. We all know that. But as they research, they are asking, okay, what can we do? Well. There are medications that can help, you know, um, with some dopamine therapy, I'll call it. You'll have to talk to medical doctors there. But they also say the body can help bring about more dopamine through exercise, okay? When you exercise your body, when you're out there exercising, your body is going to be producing a variety of natural chemicals, one of which is dopamine. That's good, that's what we want, okay? That is what we want you to do. So there's different types of exercises. One is the aerobic exercises, okay? And again, everybody is different on what they like in aerobic exercise, but it may be just going for a nice walk 
that might be your aerobic exercise. Uh, maybe going up and down a flight or two of stairs. That might be your aerobic exercise, okay? Um, it may be, uh, and I use, I'm, I'm an avid cyclist. I love riding bike. Uh, and not that I would recommend because as we know, Parkinson's affects balance and whatever. But I used to work in bicycle shops and I actually sold a couple of times tandems, the bicycles built for two, where the caregiver, typically a spouse, was buying it for uh, the other because that way the one could balance the bicycle. But they do say that bicycling and pedaling, because you're also balancing, was excellent exercise to help stimulate and bring about more dopamine, okay? To help with the, with the motor skills that of your own, okay? The other one that we have here, our second exercise is called a skilled exercise. Something that we really need to learn. And I use the analogy a lot uh, in, in terms of school, I go, I don't know if you guys remember uh, the day you got to learn how to drive, but, you know, I sit there and I go, most people, that was something of excitement, something they looked forward to doing, and yet, you know, you get in the car and it wasn't just turn on the car and boom, off you went. It was, okay, hold on, I'm in the car. Oh, wait, I have to adjust my seat. Okay, my hands go, yes, and it used to be what, two o'clock, 10 o'clock? Oh, I think now it's one and 11. Okay, oh, let me get my radio fixed. But you could methodically work your way through what you needed to, to get yourself prepared to begin your drive. Well, this is good. This is excellent. As a teacher, that's what we want kids to be able to do, right? Eventually, there may be a, have been a time in your life that you jumped in the car and you just got driving and, yep, all of a sudden you showed up at your place of work and then all of a sudden you stopped and thought and go, oh, it's Saturday. I was supposed to head to the grocery store. And you just, on autopilot, you ended up, you know, someplace that you would normally go, Okay. Not good that that was a driving scenario, but we get to that place of being automatic, okay? Well, what helps build the brain is when you first got in the car and you are having to think step by step, what do I need to do? And let me adjust my seatbelt and let me adjust my seat. That conscientious thinking is great. So one of my friends, one of the gals in the, in the front picture there, she loves to knit. Well, that's great. She's using both her hands. You know, it's all coordination, this and that. But she could literally knit in her sleep. Is that going to be a good exercise for her to stimulate what's going on in the brain? No. She's already an automatic me, on the other hand, that would be a fantastic exercise because I would have to think about every single step that I'm going through, okay? And so that's the difference of what a skilled exercise is. It's something that, yes, you have to work on, but you have to conscientiously think about what you are doing, okay? That's what's strengthening those brains. That is what's helping those connections, okay? Both types of exercises are important. Not just the walking, not just going for a bike ride, but also doing those things that challenge your brain and really make you think, okay? Neuroplasticity. It's a newer word that's come out, but as things have developed in the world of the medical field, okay, they are realizing that the brain has the ability to regenerate itself, to rebuild new connections, 
to use some of those other connections to send new messages on, okay? And it has been plenty of case studies where people have suffered from injuries to maybe strokes and that then they have been able to regain those capacities. And when they do a scan of the brain, they see that the new skill is now located in a different part of the brain. So this is fantastic news. Can we uh, help your brain learn a little bit more to strengthen it and keep that movement and prolong the effects of your Parkinson's? Okay, so this was that uh, being automatic, okay? It's, it's without that conscious attention. We want you to have to think about it, okay? And think about what you're trying to do, work at what you're trying to do, because that's what's going to help that neuroplasticity, and that hopefully is going to delay and slow down. I'm sorry to say at this point, there is no actual data linking the Balavisex program to it, yet based on these definitions and what is presented going, you will find Balavisex to be very challenging. And as soon as you think you get one thing, we turn around and make it a little bit harder and a little bit more challenging for you. So it's always pushing you to do something a little bit more different, okay? And that's what's so fun about Balavisex. That's what we love about it, okay? So what is Balavisex, okay? It's balance, auditory, vision, exercises, okay? It ranges in complexity from very, very simple bouncing one ball or passing one bag to doing three and four balls at the same time. Do my older adults do three and four balls at the same time? Not most of them, okay? And that's okay. We get the exercises to their level, all right? So we have fun together. Uh, the lady, and it seems to be ladies uh, here, uh, but they, they are always laughing, having a good time. Uh, it makes them more active, okay? Their eyes are following the bag. Their eyes are following the ball. Uh, you know, people ask me all the time, what about doing a puzzle? What about doing, well, and, and puzzles could be good in, that, in what I'm about to say, but um, like crossword puzzles and this, that. And I go, those are all great activities. Yes, they're fun. Yes, do them if you enjoy those things. But a lot of times those things are very confined in terms of your vision to one, you know, you're doing a crossword puzzle in the newspaper. It's right here. Your eyes aren't really moving much when you're just working right here. Okay. Um, putting a puzzle together, you're looking over here for a piece. You're looking over there for a piece. That's better. Okay. But the idea is getting those eyes to move, getting them to look in different directions, getting them to look close, getting to look far away at things, exercising those eyes to help stimulate your brain also, okay? So as we go on, so this, uh, this presentation was truly meant to be a live and in person back in the spring, and we all know with COVID uh, not happening. And so the best I could come up with for you guys tonight, that's, that's all of the neuroscience, okay? I'm, I'm not going to get too uh, deep and, and thick and heavy with it. Um, but live and in person, trying to be able to show you uh, is much different than you watching something on a screen, okay? Uh, this is very two-dimensional, watching it on the computer. My apologies, it's the best I can do. Um, what I encourage it to some of you uh, that maybe are practitioners, maybe activity coordinators, activity directors that work with clients who are uh, have Parkinson's is 
to get a training so that you could bring Balavisex into your centers and you can participate there with them. Those of you who uh, are now maybe, and I'm not sure what the proper word is, but are working through uh, having Parkinson's, uh, it may be that you can do some of these individually and that's fantastic. It may be that you're going to need somebody there with you, okay? Um, a caregiver to help you, uh, to help you work through, to help you get the coordination, okay? Well, I'm going to show a video and then we're going to talk about it. Basically, the supplies that we use are little bags that are filled with sand, okay? So they, they have some weight to them, and then racquetballs. These racquetballs just sent, we have them in four different colors, okay? Um, we like the colors so that if we're doing different activities, we're grabbing one, then the other, that's all, but the color really is not important. The texture of these tend to be very nice. I sometimes say um, some of the other brands out there are kind of like a slippery feel, but that's okay if that's what you have and that's what works. So we're gonna start here. Um, this becomes a very good exercise uh, that I'm gonna show you this little video here. She does every bounce six times, okay? Uh, these are new ones that just comes out and, and Bill Huber calls the, these a cluster. And within this cluster, there are seven exercises. And those seven exercises are done in increments of six, okay? So here, she, let's see, it, oh, oh, that one went two. Thank you for, uh, oh, all of them went, no. Hold on, hold on. You know, when I do this at home, they didn't all go at once. Let's see, are you guys seeing my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, let's see if I, I go. Get... Off. I got kicked off. We're having a storm where I live, so I lost you for a few minutes. But yeah, we can see it. Okay, when I push play, all the videos seem to take off. Okay, we're going to have to do this slightly differently. Uh, instead of doing it play, I am going to just have to do it this way. Actually, let me think. Give me one minute. Um, if I hit play here, can I make it? Emily, I can see you. Are you seeing this big enough? Yeah. It looks great. Yes. Okay. It's fine, Jackie. It's fine. Okay. So the first thing she did was she bounced and we do a double clap bounce. Okay. Two hands. So for some of you, this is going to be very good with your coordination. Okay, because you're going to get to use both hands. And she did six bounces in the center. Then she moved to her right foot and she did six bounces to the right foot. Now she does six to the left. Then she's gonna go right to left six times. Now she's going to go left, right, six times. Then she's going to go right. Oh, she had to, she's went through, she's going through it one more. She got lost on where she was. Okay. And so this is, this is good practice because yes, you have to be remembering where you are. So you're crossing your midline, your eyes are moving and you're having to think. Now she's going to go right, center, left, right, center, left, six times.
Okay, now she goes left, center, right. Left, center, right. And she's gonna then do that six times and that finishes the cluster, okay? And so Bill Hubert has come out with these clusters and I believe there's eight cl different clusters that he goes through, okay? So she just finished there. Here's one of my seniors, okay? A little bit more advanced. I cannot say that she has Parkinson's, but just to show you some of the things that we do. So we have six balls. And balls go a flying, and that's okay. That's what makes us laugh and we have fun, okay? Up here is another one of my seniors, and again, I'm gonna say uh, not diagnosed with Parkinson's, but she gives a little testimony of what Balavisex has done to her. So I'm just, I'm just gonna play it and let you guys listen to Grace. Hi, Grace. Thank you for uh, sharing. Um, so I just wanna ask you, uh, what made you sign up for Balavisex? I signed up because I thought the word balance was enough and I needed that. Okay. I have tried a variety of techniques and it didn't work. But I was willing to try one more. Okay. So I came. <laughs> Fun. Excellent. We're glad you came. And how long have you been doing Balavisex now with me? And how much do you practice on your own? Okay, I've had four sessions with you, and I have practiced by myself for at least 15 minutes each day. And then beginning two weeks ago, I began to work with another class person on the twosomes. Excellent. And we did that for 45 minutes three times. Okay. And with all this Bell of Essex you shared with me, what is it that you believe Bell of Essex has done for you and that you're noticing? When I came to the first class, I could not stand in the middle of a room without my walker. I did the whole first class up against a wall. One week later, after I'd done my homework, I came in here and stood and did the activities for a straight 45 minutes. I did not get tired and I did not fall down. And you have never stood. One week. How long has it been since you were able to stand for 45 minutes? Freely, probably three years. Okay. Now, part of that was because I was caring for my husband with the dementia. So I was, I was sitting down a lot. I, you know, I wasn't getting the activity I knew I should. But nevertheless, I'm saying that for three years, I could not stand independently in the middle of the room without my walk. Excellent. And uh, so is Bell of Essex still challenging and fun for you? You better believe it. Excellent. You better believe it. Well, thank you for sharing your story. I'm glad to do it. I'm sold on it. Excellent. I have tried many forms of physical therapy, but we didn't get to the balance part. I shouldn't say we didn't get to it. The balance part didn't click. This clicked because I'm doing something Thinking at the same time I'm standing, you got to think both. Mm -hmm. And if I'm standing, just standing, you think I'm going to fall down. But if I'm standing, tossing new bags and balls, I forget that I'm standing up. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I think that's the story. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was Grace. And, you know, she kind of sums it up, you know. She, she said that she's distracted from the balance and the standing because she's busy doing the bad thing. And um, she also said, you know, I think what resonates with me was in caring for her husband, she sits a lot. And I think as, as we age and get older, we tend to sit more and become more um, not as active. And that actually works against us then. Now, I'm going to try and see if I can expand this screen, but again, I have a few more little exercises. If they all start playing, I'll have to bring it back down uh, this way here a minute, but let me, let me see if, if, I, if this will play just one at a time. Okay. All right. Okay. 
Here we are, and we are going to, uh, this is Jackie with Brains in Motion, and we are, are you seeing it? demonstrating the Balavisex okay, hold on. exercise of... That's because I'm going to have to go this way. Hold on. Every... Hand over hand rectangle. You guys may start. So as they are doing it, they are keeping their hands in close proximity. They are just turning it over. Go a little slower, ladies. There we go. And now, behind your back to make it a circle. Okay. So, real quick, on that one, first of all, they were speedy, speedy, speedy. Balavisex should be much slower. You're working with a partner, and all you are doing is putting the bag, and your hands are so close. So when Bill Hubert says hand over hand, it just goes into their hand. You got to clap it and bring it over. We don't like hand claps in the center. We like you to cross this midline. You might have to clamp it with your thumb and then put it in your partner's hand. Okay? For some people with Parkinson's, caregivers, you may have to assist. If, and this is going to be hard for me to, to demo, but if I have Parkinson's and I can't get that over, you may have to get your hand and clamp it and move it for them okay and that's okay it's getting this crossing of this midline that we want and we go in both directions to the right and to the left some of you may not have a bean bag at home go get a bag of rice go get a bag of dried beans and just work on passing it to someone else. And then if your shoulders allow and you can go behind your back and go about 10 in each direction. Okay. So then we come here and we have, I think this is the PowerPoint. Okay. Nope. So we don't want that one. Hold on. Okay. Where'd PowerPoint go? Give me a minute here. Okay. Are you seeing my screen? Probably not. Let's get, where is here? Okay. Um, every time I switch platforms, I'm going to have to go back and share. So that is what we call the hand over hand. That's both in a square or a circle. And you go, okay, that's really all we're doing, you know. Uh, you showed me bouncing a ball this way. You showed me that. Well, then we bring it up. And now, if, as you notice, we're going to add the feet. Okay? And this becomes super challenging here. Okay? So here we go. Let me get this. Whoops. Let me get it started. Oh, it's, I got to play it to, to get it to go. Hold on. And then let me stop sharing screen and let me... Jump on here and stop and share screen again. Sorry for all this jumping back and forth. Here we go. And again, we are here giving a demonstration of Bill Hubert's Ball of SX, the two bag square with the feet. Remember with the feet, we always start with the right foot. So what I want you to notice here, first of all, we've increased to two bags, okay? So that just adds another layer. And we could do two bags without the feet for starters. We use different colors just because, okay, that we can keep them. Now, I said we start with the right feet. So focus down at the, towards the bottom at our feet. One of us, our hand, our right hand, and our right foot will be extended, but the other one, it will be opposite. So right there, my, oh, and, and it's because we have two, okay. 
Uh, but you see my right hand and right foot both stepped out. When we only have one, then Pam, the other person in the photo, her right foot will go out, but there won't be a bag. That is why we go in both directions. And we start stepping, so we're not stepping on each other's. And we can go the other way. Step right. Oh, step right. Okay, so here, if I back it, if now you see that I stepped right, but I passed with my left hand. So it's opposite, okay? That's why we go in both directions. Is that making sense? And again, it's slow, but I tell you that right there is super challenging. Now I got to figure out how to. Where'd it go? Okay. Um. So, uh, and I think you guys are seeing me now. So, when you do those bags, okay, you want to always start with your right foot. And if you start with your right hand and right foot, it's what we call ipsilateral, same-sided. But if you put it in your left hand and go to pass it, you still step with the right foot. Now it's cross lateral. I have my left hand and my right foot. And that is good because that's working both sides of my brain simultaneously. But my partner needs the same exercise, so we do it in both directions. Okay? Let me get my screen here up again for you. And let me share screen again. Here we go and share. Now, this next one is still working with that bag. It's a variation. So if there's more than two of you, so thinking that if you are, um, I, I, I was last winter going out to Port Huron working at their senior center, and we would have a couple people in a group. So what happens if we have a group of people and here's a variation, okay? So let me get that. And this is Jackie with Hold on, stop that. And here we go. Going to demonstrate uh, a variation of the hand over hand. Now we have three people demonstrating, but you can have as many in your group as you want. We will be including the feet in this exercise, and we are just passing the balls around the group. The bags. No. Okay. And so on that one, here we go. Hold on just a minute. Um, get this back up, and where did Zoom go? Here's Zoom. Okay, so on that one, uh, again, you we just pass, instead of passing it to one person across, uh, let's see, instead of passing it just to the person across, we had a group that way we can involve more than just one person, okay? Now I'm gonna transition and we're gonna go from a few of the bag exercises that I was showing you to the ball, okay? So now we bring in these balls and again, they were the whatever color, it doesn't matter, there were four of them. We, we're gonna bring them in and we're gonna do a one ball rectangle, okay? So hang tight here, let me, Get this Hi, shared. this is Jackie Whoops. with Brains stop, in Motion. Stop, there we go. And here, and share screen. Get that one? Yes. And? We are going to demonstrate the one ball rectangle 
with a partner. Make sure as you're doing this, you have the technique, the principles of the ball bouncing. So we have waist high, handshake release, C the C, the up, the pendulum, and that is the one ball rectangle with a partner. So, hi, this let's, is Jackie yeah, with Brains in Motion, let's and get, let's get ready. Okay, um, so we do a lot with the rectangle with the balls uh we do one ball rectangle to the right to the left we go behind our backs make it an oval um my experience in doing this at port huron was with some, because so many of them uh were part so many of the participants had uh been recently diagnosed with parkinson their caregivers were their partners and they were challenged. I mean, that's about as far as we got. We didn't get much further than some of these things. And it was a constant, you know, challenge of trying to remember what we were doing, a constant uh, challenge of, are we going to the right? Are we going to the left? Am I using my feet? Am I not? And the more of those skills that we layer on, it's not that they're difficult. It just becomes mentally very taxing and very challenging, which is what they say helps with the creation of the dopamine, okay? Um, so let me go back. I have two more little uh, short videos to show you here. Uh, so let me get my Zoom up here a minute and share the screen again. We'll get this one going, okay? And here, so here, uh, and and I may I'll probably have to get it small again, but we're, we're what we're demonstrating here is this individual, okay, kind of going back on what Grace was saying, she had to lean up against the wall. So some of the our individuals are unable to stand and have the balance to stand there by themselves. Then we just say, oh, well, then what can you do? What can you handle? And we just dial it down a little bit. And she is fully capable of standing, but she's helping me uh, demonstrate here. She leaned up against the wall. We can also do it in chairs. So I'm going to show you both of these uh, while the screen is down. It's the one ball rectangle. It's still the same exercise. We're just doing it. Um, standing against the wall and or sitting. So she's using two hands to bounce it and catch it. And then she comes across her body and she bounces it on the other side. Okay. On this one, they're just using one hand. Oh, Pam is using one hand. Pat is using two hands. But she's doing it from a chair. Okay. And then let's go back here. Well, that's not what I want. And it should go. And then just in conclusion, real quick, a lot of my information uh, there's a ton of research out there. So again, it's not my material. I have to share that. Okay. And I'm Jackie from Brains in Motion. And, you know, if some of you are interested, uh, and I would say some of the caregivers or whatever in a workshop, uh, my next workshop, pending COVID and all that is scheduled for August 10th and 11th here in Holland, Michigan. Uh, but that way you can learn how to do Balavisex and take it back to your centers and work with your clients and your Parkinson's people back at your centers. So, um, and that is what I have to share with you uh, this evening. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I am going to turn it back over. Let's see, questions over here on the side.
Can we watch these on YouTube again? Okay, what is the uh, address? So um, for the person, I didn't know if you want me to use your name or not. Uh, first of all, Michigan Parkinson says that they are recording it and so they will be posting it. Um, I, how do I say this? Uh, I just would like it to be cautious that those in the Parkinson's Foundation, just because it is Bill Hubert's material, and again, I try to give him all the credit, and this was not a training. It was a demonstration, so you could kind of get a taste of what Battle of Essex is. Um, I would encourage everybody uh, to get themselves to a Battle of Essex training or have their caregiver get them into a, a, a training so that you learn it properly and then can really utilize the program for the way it was designed. Um, I'm going to ask that it's not put out there just for the general public, you know, to say, hey, I've been trained in Battle of Essex because it was just a demonstration. So uh, I hope okay. that works for everybody, okay? Yeah. Um, Jackie, thank you. Um, we do record all of our virtual support groups, all of our education meetings, and all of our exercise classes. So all people are going to view is what you presented tonight. Exactly. On our YouTube channel, if you look at the chat link, I just put the YouTube um, address in the chat link. Um, if you go to our website, parkinsonsmi.org, at the top of our homepage is our YouTube channel, and you can click there, or you can click on this link that I just posted. Okay. Uh, another question, Gary Moody, um, where can he go to get training? Okay, you just type yep. in motion.com. Yep, and my next training is here in Holland, Michigan. Uh, August 10th and 11th. It is a 17-hour training. They are long days, but we jam-pack them in there, and uh, it, it, most people are okay with the two days. Uh, some of the trainings, Bill Hubert, uh, he has reduced his schedule due to the COVID. He's in Wichita, Kansas, um, so he has taken most of his trainings for uh, the spring and through the summer off the calendar. Uh, I have my own little office here and I limit my trainings to, uh, I'm trying to limit this one to about six just because I don't have the overhead costs of renting a place or travel. Uh, so I can, I can limit it to six type of a thing. Um, so, but there we go. Um, Jackie, is there any training on the east side of Michigan? Like um, Detroit area or? At the moment, uh, I am not sure of schedules. I do travel. Uh, you know, I like in the spring, I was going to Chicago to uh, do the workshop for a school there in Chicago. Uh, so if there are the caregivers or a group that want to have a training, I am happy to travel. Uh, and that is, you know, not, not, a, not a problem for me. So, okay, we can so organize things like if that. If we organize a training in this part of the state, um, we will be sure to let you all know. Yeah, yep. So that would be fantastic for them that uh, to do a training and to, and to get some, you know, hands-on experience and so that they really understand how it goes. And, you know, we could even do something uh, a little bit differently in terms of a training. If we want to do a training where we invite uh, the caregivers or, and, and I'm going to say the person with Parkinson's and maybe shorten the time each day, maybe not get through all 200 exercises, but get through quite a bit, but then we're working together and then they go and they work for whatever, six, eight weeks. We come back, we do another 10 exercises, something like that. We could always do something like that so that um, people aren't feeling extremely overwhelmed. But if somebody who is listening on the webinar, it, you know, um, has kind of like the Port Huron, this uh, Center for Aging, to have somebody maybe 
there spearheaded and uh, so that I'm not traveling every single week for it uh, because then it doesn't become worth my time <laughs> to be doing that. But if somebody could learn it there and then <laughs> so we, we, but we can work on things like that. Okay, there's a question that says, where can my Parkinson person go to have sessions in this that are not training for demonstration, just an ongoing exercise? Well, uh, in, and that's from Thomas. And then Thomas, I'm going to say, where are you located? Uh, well, we're in, we're in Harrison Township, which is near Mount Clemens. And from the way you said your training sessions are that you're going to have in Holland, um, you said they're like seven hour days. Most Parkinson's people can't handle a seven hour day. So is there like a trainer in Southeastern Michigan that we could go to like for PT exercises or something like that? Not that I currently know of. Um, right now I know of three of us in the state of Michigan. I am in Holland. I know of another woman who is up in the um, kind of close to the Traverse City area, and then another woman who is out by the Ann Arbor area. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Ann Arbor is not um, too bad. Would you be able to share that information with us? Yep. Her name is Katie Held, and uh, how do we get a hold of Katie Held? Let me see if I can grab here a minute. I'm not sharing my screen, correct? No. Okay. Um, I'd much rather go to Holland. I know, it's beautiful here. Come on, come to Holland. There you go. Okay, Katie Held's address, email address is there. And then let me see if I have a phone number for Katie. Um, oh, come on, copy this. Okay, and here is Katie Held's phone number. So that is Katie Held. She's the one that's in Ann Arbor, and uh, she has done quite a bit there. And that's where I said uh, for Thomas, Yes, I understand that Parkinson's people cannot, I mean, I did hour-long classes and they were exhausted after an hour. I get right. that. Um, so that's where I said the training would be more for like the caregivers or uh, an activities person from the center right. uh, so that then they can facilitate like 30-minute classes or they can be the ones uh, that are administering kind of like physical therapy, a 30 minute session, you know, however that would work. Um, if we want to design something and structure something a little bit differently where maybe a training for the caregiver is like two or three hours and we do a few sessions like that every two months, for the caregivers, then they can go and work with their Parkinson's person uh, with a few exercises, but thinking we, you know, it may, we may not want to get into the 17 How hours. How long could you go? The, by the end of the 17 hours, we're, we're juggling four, three, four balls right. on the ground, which I'm Seven gonna, hours a day. Right. I said, how long can you go? If it's really young. Oh, somebody's talking. And, and what, I'm sorry, what would the cost of a training yeah. session be? We, we would have to, we would have to just talk and, and work something out and see what we can configure. So I would just encourage you to maybe email me or call me and let's see what, you know, what we would design. The 17 hour training is typically $200 for the whole 17 hours. But again, at the end of that, we're juggling three balls. That's way more than people are going to need for Parkinson's. So I, personally, I'm the caregiver and I can't do 17 hours. Right, right. I understand that. So that's where mm -hmm. I'm saying instead of doing 17 hours, let's look at going, okay, maybe a six hour training and calling it good because in six hours, I think most of the exercises we go through in six hours will address 
anything and everything that a Parkinson's person could handle. So if we want to tailor something like that, I would be open for those discussions. Okay. Okay. So I think mm -hmm. um, I can put my contact here also in the chat. Um, you know, if we want to get a small group together uh, of a few people, um, that's one number and yeah, that's the, that's the better number. And, um, you know, we can organize something where we can get whatever, four caregivers in a small little training for six hours and we can figure something out price-wise and this and that and configure something, okay? So Jackie, are you certified in this program like, like people who yeah. do big and loud? Yes, he doesn't call it, um, I'm trying to type here at the same time. Sorry. He calls us um, sanctioned. There's about a dozen, well, now there's probably about two dozen of us that are sanctioned, licensed to teach the workshops. Uh, and what he says is anybody who attends a workshop it has permission to use it with their clientele, with their people. What he does not permit is, let's say I trained you, you cannot go hang a shingle up out and say, hey, I'm a, a Balavisex therapist type of thing. Okay. But okay. Are you allowed to use it with your students the next day, your Parkinson's people the next day, your older adults the next day? You bet, yes, you are. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay, did everybody see on the chat where Jackie's put her phone number and email? Yes, I have it. No. Okay. I don't know how to get there. Mm. Look on the if you go up to the top right hand corner of your screen, there's a little red dot that says REC. Touch on that and it'll open up some choices. And then there's a more choice, and in that more choice, there's the chat. Hope that helped. Yep. Thank you. It did. <laughs> it did. Good. It take it takes a team here, guys. It takes sure. all of us together, doesn't it? <laughs> Remember, we're raising children. We need a village. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that is so true. Well, that this is, was very interesting. Thank you very much. You are more than welcome. And I, I so appreciate being uh, your guest tonight. And I hope I get to meet several of you in person. This that would be, be wonderful. Time. Yes. Thank you. Be. This has been really, really interesting. <laughs> I, I guess just one more question, Jackie. You said yeah. you're going to be in Holland during in August. Where will that be advertised at? Um, it is on my website. Uh, let me put that here for you. Um, but you, it's just in my office, uh, so you can uh, email yeah. me or call me, and I can get you that information. Okay. I have, I think about, I have about three people right now that are interested. They haven't signed up yet because they're waiting on the COVID thing. And like I said, I'm going to try to keep it to just about six people because of the COVID thing. So, right. um, we have a lot of hand sanitizer here, and, and that's what we do. <laughs> Get that down. Um, and and right. that, that it, my, my, email, my website is wrong. It should, instead of being in dot motion, it should be in hyphen motion. So let me do it again here. You want? Dash. We know where she is. Yep. It should have a hyphen oh. here, not a dot. Sorry about that, guys. www.brains-in-motion.com. Mm -hmm. Correct. Got it. We're looking at it. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Very good. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, but it was a good question. This was Thanks, very Jackie. interesting. We yes. really appreciate it. All you right. Thank you. My all right. We're going to say good night, all. All right. Good night. Have a good night. Good night.
We've got exercise at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, same length. There you go. Thanks, Thanks Mary Sue. Tomorrow's <laughs> yoga. Yes, it is. It's yoga. Yoga. <laughs> go it's yoga. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.